Next up, let's talk about logging. Logging in general can be pretty useful and pretty essential depending on what application you're trying to develop. But basically logging for anyone who's not aware is trying to write text to a static um, text file inside your logs directory so you can have an easier time debugging applications while they're either in production or while syncing or wherever you don't have easy access to a var dump or some sort of debugging which you can output in the browser. So, okay, what kind of logging methodologies do we have here in CakePHP? Well, as we can see via the documentation, the logging data in CakePHP is done with the log function, which is provided by the log trait, basically, which is common the common ancestor for many CakePHP classes. So if we now go into the code and maybe into the app controller, um, this is the initialize method. So basically, whenever the an app controller or something below is being initialized, this is being called. And in here we have our log method. The log method um, is present inside the log trait, and the log trait is uh, present inside the components, the few controllers, shells. But shells basically are deprecated in CakePHP 4, so don't write any new shells and commands. Um, but yeah, and with that uh, we can specify a message. A log level and a context. So if we go back to our app controller initialize method, we can say um, hello YouTube and basically see what is happening now when we call our front end. Just made a request and now inside of our logs directory we have a new file called error.log and in here we have our message with a timestamp when that happened specifying the log level as error uh, level and hello YouTube. Now, okay, why is the error log present here and why is it not the debug log or info.log or whatever? Well, as we've seen before, the, the this log method has a default value as a level and this level is the error level. So yeah, if we specify another log level, so Let's go here and say we want to print to the info level and re redo our request. We now have a debug log with the same uh, text, but now with the info level. Okay, so good. What specifies which levels go into which file? So this is what we have previously talked about in the config directory inside the app.php file rather down into the uh, at the lower end of the file we have a log section and inside here we have two main parts the debug and the error section and i'll just go quickly through what each line does uh, the class name basically specifies what kind of logging should be happening so here we are trying to log to a file because well you can write custom logging classes as well which probably log to i don't know a slack channel or other utilities as well we specify that the path where it should put the file is inside the logs directory so this is basically the um, um, the, the constant which is defined in config paths um, then the file name which should be used for that specific uh, log configuration so here it is a debug uh, we also have the possibility to define the whole configuration as a URL or as a DSN um, configuration inside of our environment file. So this is basically what is happening here. So depending on if you want to configure that as an environment variable, you can do that with this as well. And scopes and levels are basically just a, a way to um, subdivide your method calls so you can specify which 
um, which debug logging information goes into that specific file. And yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll basically just show you um, because as you can see here, we have no scope defined for the debug information and no scope defined for the error log configuration but all the notice info and debug levels are being locked inside the debug log and basically everything else so warning error critical alert and, and emergency are written into the error log but usually you want to have a more granular configuration or more granular control which kind of logging methodologies uh, and function calls get into which files so we can add another configuration here i'll just name it youtube scoop uh, youtube scope uh, basically the same as before so file log the path is logs but the file name is now youtube underline scope and the scope we definitely uh, defined here is youtube so how can we use that now if we go back into our source controller app controller here we have again our log trade log method and our third parameter is the context which we can specify to which uh, logging configuration that um, text is being sent to so if we now specify here youtube because if we go back again to the app.php, this is what is what we are specifying here as scopes, not as the array key or as the file name, but as the scope. This now tells, okay, this should now be hello YouTube family. Uh, that this should be written into the separate file. So if we now do another separate request, and we go into our logs directory. We now have a separate YouTube scope log file and we see here now, okay, good. We have our separate log message in here. Now, okay, as said before, this log trade is present inside these methods. So sure, you can use this log in here as well, but I personally just use the static log mm, functions directly so if we go back to here um, this basically just uses this cake internal not really internal um, class and mythology so now we can basically just say cake log log so this is now cake php, uh, PHP storm magic as well remember to um, use the correct namespa namespace at the top and now we have a static method called lock where we can specify okay we want to write to the error level we want to send a new error message and we want to send it to the context YouTube so these two are basically the same this is just only present inside the aforementioned base classes inside KKPHP. So now let's test that again. And now we have our new error message here inside of our YouTube scope log. But one thing you have to be careful or be, uh, be aware of is whenever you are specifying a custom scope or a custom log configuration, and you are subdividing your levels. So let's just say I'm just listening to warnings and errors inside of my YouTube scope. And then I'll go back to the controller app controller and write an info message to that scope. Uh, I'll just call it new info message to be very here what is happening I'll redo a request but you will now see that we don't have an info message in here and we don't have an info message with the specified text so let's just go back new info message should be the text we don't have it in the debug log we don't have it in the error log and we don't have it in our scope so as you can see 
you have to be very careful whenever you are defining a scope and levels that you're actually matching these two together so that CakePHP doesn't just drop your, mm, your logging messages. So I usually just keep the levels empty and use the scopes basically just as extra logging files to separate whatever I'm trying to debug or I'm trying to keep track of whatever is happening in my application, but I don't really specify any levels, but yeah, that's basically up to you. And uh, then the last thing I also wanted to mention here is that we also have a queries log. So let me just clean up all our logs file currently. Uh, and as you can see already in the, com uh, in the comment, to enable this dedicated query log, you need to set your data sources log flag to true. So, okay, we provide a default configuration to log any SQL queries which are sent to the database, but we have to enable that config. And this config is inside of our app underscore local. Inside the data sources default, um, configuration and in here either it is pre-generated by cakephp or you have to add it yourself you can set log to true and now if we go to a page where we have sql queries executed like we can see here so here we have basically a few sql queries <laughs> and now if we go back to our application and go into our logs directory, we now have a queries log file. And as you can see here, all the queries have been logged to see exactly what is happening. Uh, so you have also an easier time debugging SQL queries whenever you're trying to, I don't know, debug queries from a plugin or whatever. But yeah, that's, I would say, basically all that I wanted to tell you about logging. Um, if you want to log any objects, you need to be aware that um, the logging mechanism always requires you to pass a string to it. So I don't know if we go back into our app controller and instead of we say new info message, we can just, I don't know, let's just say this get request and we want to log our request. This won't work because yeah, CakePHP requires you to have a string in here and what I would like or, or what I like to do here is just print R with a second parameter as true uh, so that we basically stringify sort of that object and if we now go back, re-query our page so that queries are being sent, we can now go into a YouTube scope and we can see, okay, this was a server request and we can see, okay, it was the control categories controller, it was the action and basically all the other data which is present inside of our request object can also be seen in a rather, I would say, manageable way instead of, yeah, uh, var dumping it or whatever you're trying or using as a debugging tool for your application. But yeah, that's definitely all I wanted to say about logging. You know what to do and I will see you in the next one.